Before the break, we were discussing the growing Reclaim the Streets movement, which has arisen from the tragic murder of 33-year-old Sarah Everard. Well, we're continuing that conversation now and discussing the rest of today's biggest news stories with Nicola Thorpe and Julia hartley Brewer. Welcome to both of you this morning. So morning. let's begin with that, shall we? So Cressida Dick refuses to resign and defends the action of the police at Sarah Everard's vigil. Uh, she said that her officers were in a difficult position, having to in interpret COVID restrictions while applying common sense sense and discretion. So, uh, Nicola, you saw what happened there. What were your thoughts? I was shocked. I think everyone was shocked by what we saw, but I wasn't surprised um, just because it was now a white woman that we've seen um, the victim of police brutality. We saw this happen last year with Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I think that possibly because now it is a white woman and a female centric movement, this has been happening to black women all throughout last year during the BLM riots. Mm -hmm. um, not riots, sorry, that's awful of me to say, during the BLM protests. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the same thing over and over again. Why on earth, why on earth do the police feel in that moment? We've all seen the video. At what point did they have to step in and do that in the name of COVID safety? As well. Do you think if they were allowed to go ahead and it had been an official yes. vigil, do you think things would have been very different? Yes, they had discretion as well. This is what's really, really important. The police had the choice whether or not they stepped in in the way they did. And I think that considering this is an issue that is all about trust between women and the police, they really had an obligation to probably take a step back here. Throughout the, um, the lockdown, Julia, uh, the, the, the police have been put in very, very difficult situations. Um, many of those situations, something that I never imagined that they would be actually in. Uh, and occasionally we've had stories on here where they have apparently misread the room. And it looks like the um, relationship between the local borough police and the organisers of the um, initial vigil was actually very good. And it's when the Met got involved, apparently this is what Harriet Harman was saying earlier on, that this is where things went wrong. Did the Met misread the room? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, this is a terrible misjudgment on the part of uh, the Metropolitan Police. So the officers in charge and, of course, the individual officers manhandling young women. I have to say, though, Nicola's quite wrong in terms of the policing of the Black Lives Matter protests. The complaints there was that they were allowed to go ahead when other protests were not and police officers taking the knee. There weren't young women being manhandled by the police because they were black. Quite the opposite. Um, what I think is... You think most they weren't being manhandled because they were black? No, exactly. What, is, what I think is okay. most surprising about the events on Saturday night and on Sunday, the reaction to it, is that so many people who were very supportive of all these authoritarian measures, taking away our fundamental civil liberties, not just at the height of a pandemic last March, but, but throughout uh, this whole of last year and continuing those uh, from no doubt many more months to come. But they are shocked that when you take away the right uh, to protest, uh, that you will see the police uh, enacting this way. And I didn't see the same complaints when lockdown protesters were treated in exactly the same way. Young yeah. women <clears throat> thrown to the ground, no. handcuffed, and none of these people were complaining then. I've heard you talk about this a lot th this morning, Julia, on your radio show, and I would say that your issue is with, with protesting COVID and lockdown, which was an issue that didn't exist before March last year, right? Whereas racism, misogyny, harassment, they have all existed for decades, hundreds of years, and people are taking action now. Whilst I have sympathy for you, I believe that everybody has a right, a human right to protest. Mm. I would say that there is a vast difference between protesting because of women's violence, because of racism, and lockdown measures. No, pro protesting for the right to have your say in a free liberal democracy is important, whether you agree with that particular issue yep. or not. Otherwise, you're saying you support protests. But the key thing here, it was a terrible decision by very senior figures in the Met. Let's not pretend that the decision to send police officers in, big burly men, to go into that bandstand, to drag away young women who were peacefully marking uh, the vigil, um, that, that, was, that would have gone up to an incredibly high level. And I think this is not the first time that Preston Dick, the Metropolitan Police Chief, has made poor decisions on this. I think virtually every single protest, she has veered between far too lenient, taking the knee at BLM, and then far too stringent with lockdown sceptics, somewhere in the middle with Extinction Rebellion, letting them take over the streets for, for weeks and weeks on end, and then suddenly going in. Um, we just what the problem we have right now is we have policing that completely depends on the day and on the cause, as opposed to measures that we know exactly what's going to happen. Should she, re anything. should she resign? 
I think she should. I think she probably should have resigned a long time ago. I think she's massively overpromoted, uh, and I and I think she's there for political reasons rather than her policing ability. I think again and again but and again. Political reasons? What, what are you saying? Really what do you mean? What do you mean political reasons? I, I, I think I think because she's a woman and she has the right sort of political woke views, and I think yes. actually political so so the, long, the, long one thing, the one thing that, that that we're discussing is uh, is uh, and uh, and Nicola just mentioned the word misogyny um, is the uh, is the fact that. Um, it is it, it is vital that that it's women don't take any blame for walking. A, you should be able to walk the streets. It's not a woman's fault if she walks the streets and 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 is threatened. It's the it's the man's fault uh, for doing the threatening. It's an educational thing. And we're you know this is a big story we're having now. It's taken the tragic death of Sarah to have that story. Um, that uh, that that you know listening to women's rights, the promotion of women, equality with women. And you're now saying that the Met Police Commissioner is got has got a job because she's a woman yes i mean i, I just i don't know anyone in the police force who, who rates cressida dick so um th th there is undoubtedly that that's a factor but those are very very different things from from the, the, the what you're discussing there in terms of women being safe on the streets and 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 dealing with uh with, with sexual abuse harassment rape and the like those are, those are very different issues what's different sorry women being feeling safe on the street and then rape and assault how how are they different they're very different from whether or not you have a female appointed to the job of Met Chief. Oh, OK, I understand what you're talking about. Well, what Philip is saying is all, it's all part of the same problem. For you to say she's only just got the job because she's a woman, that in itself is um, part of this integral, this misogynistic viewpoint that you're putting across as a woman, which makes it, you know... OK. Said with a smile. All right, well, she's got a busy afternoon because her and Boris Johnson uh, have a task force meeting and they're discussing what further action needs to take place to keep our women safer, to keep make the streets a safer place. I mean, this is a huge job. Like you just said, this has been happening for decades and decades and decades. What can be done? It's exactly what Philip just said. It's not about violence against women. It's about male violence against women. And that's what we need to focus on because... For decades, women have been doing all sorts of ridiculous things to try and keep ourselves safe. Has sending a text to your friend at the end of the night to let her know that you've got home, how is that supposed to keep you safe? Mm. That is actually really only informing a friend if you have disappeared. There were, uh, there were calls for a curfew on men. There were, yeah, and I understand that it was um, Baroness Judy Jones who, who spoke about that, but she did say it uh, to kind of make a point. It wasn't a serious suggestion in the House of Lords. It was to prove this point that women feel like they can't go out after 6pm, so how would men feel if they couldn't mm. go outside after 6 p.m.? And I've actually been overwhelmed this weekend by wonderful friends, male friends, men on Twitter, who have spoken out and said, we're part of the problem. You know, I don't harass women or I don't do this, that and the other, but I have stood by and allowed it to happen. So, yes, not all men are abusers, but all men, I think, at some point in their life have passed up an opportunity to call out abuse. And we're not just talking about... I haven't. I haven't. You don't think so? No, not to my knowledge. Oh, well, there we go. You're one of the not all men. Actually, then. I suspect there are probably a great many men who uh, who, ha who have. And there, I can, I'm hearing in, in the gallery now a number of men who work so, on the show saying, no, that hasn't happened to me. Well, I find that really difficult to believe because I, as a woman, have even been in a situation where I've seen somebody being harassed or lads talking about a woman in a certain way. And I haven't felt like I've been able to step in. It doesn't mean that you're at fault, oh, but oh. it means that you've missed out an opportunity to be part of Julia? the solution. I have to say I, I have repeatedly, I've certainly always stepped up for myself and stepped up on, I, would, I mean, dozens of occasions for other women, partly, I think, because I know that I'm quite a strong character and therefore I can do it and not feel afraid. But when you talk about, you know, women being afraid of leaving the house after 6pm, um, I don't think women are afraid to leave the house. I think that... I, and no, because they're course, more likely to be attacked in, at home. Two women die every but, single week at the hands well, okay, of... You're only more likely to be attacked in the home if you live with an abusive man. And oh, most so it's her fault. So it's the woman's fault for you're, deciding you're, who you're you're broadening no, no, out this, 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 no, sorry, for the I time we have. That? Yes, Julia. Sorry, this idea that oh, by pointing out that women, I'm not, I'm not at risk of being attacked in my own home because I don't live with an abusive man. That doesn't mean we're blaming women who live with an abusive man. I'm stating the fact that most women in Britain aren't afraid to be at home and they aren't afraid on the streets. They take precautions and things. I agree with you that we shouldn't have to take those precautions and, and, it will be, and we need to change that dynamic. But I do think that we need to take men along with us and not really just throw out this idea that an awful lot of men are just shrugging and don't really care that women don't feel safe or that they're harassed on the streets. That's not how most... Most men feel. Um, we uh, we should read the um, 
Right of reply from the Met Commissioner, Cressida Dick, who said yesterday, I uh, wouldn't have wanted to see a vigil in memory of Sarah end with those scenes. My officers have been in a very difficult position policing within coronavirus restrictions, but of course trying to apply common sense and discretion and trying to help people understand the law and engage before we ever turn to any enforcement. They are policing during a pandemic. Nobody wants a third wave. They have a really difficult job. This is fiendishly difficult policing, but I'm sure for the people who wanted to express their feelings that was a difficult difficult situation for them and that's why it needs a cold light of day sober review. Are you satisfied with that statement? I think that, you know, to, to point all of the blame at the police is, is one thing. I understand why people are very angry about that, but ultimately there was a policy in place and the government since um, the Me Too year, you know, the 2017, they've not put anything in legislation to protect women's rights. So actually the, the government, it is on them. Mm. To, to step in and go, OK, what legislation can we change instead of bringing in extra legislation to, to penalise women who want to hold a vigil? Thank we you have both. to leave it there, Thank unfortunately. You. Thank, Thank you, you both very much. very much indeed. Thank you, Julian.